Hey everybody, it's your homegirl, Little Night Owl. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am here, there, and everywhere. So I'm not always um, updating my YouTube as I should. I'm trying to focus on that more. But my priority right now is um, self-care, uh, mental health awareness within myself. I'm doing a lot of self-love. Um, I just wanted to come on here though and just give a little bit of an update on what I am dealing with and what I'm doing to treat myself. So I am dealing with depression really bad. Depression just comes out of nowhere. It puts me in a really bad funk and I'm feeling really detached from the world. I don't want to associate with anybody. I don't want to talk to any of my family members. I don't even really want to associate with my family that's here in my home and that's really sad but i don't have an off switch i don't have a switch where i can just click and i'm all good i don't and it sucks i have to just go with the flow until i feel better and who knows when that is but i've been dealing with it already for a very long time i want to say it's been going on for maybe a month and a half um depression i've been dealing with for a long time I've been taking medication for two years so um, but I'm telling you yes I take medication but it doesn't always it's not like a cure recently just felt ugly horrible didn't want to even do any of my business work didn't want to journal didn't want to do anything and I felt like something's really going on with me and one thing with me is that I can identify when something just ain't right with myself and I try to just get it right there and then and try to fix it. I'm trying to find out what it is that is bothering me or why am I feeling this way. Sometimes I can get an answer, sometimes I don't. Um, in this specific case, I feel like I have to do a lot of self-care. Um, I have to just take care of my mental health. And whether that's detaching from everybody, then that's what I have to do. So that's exactly what I've done. Um, even when it comes to my kids, I don't treat them bad. I'm just like not attached to what they're doing or want to be involved with what they're doing, which is sad. Thankfully, um, you know, their dad takes helps me and takes care of that in the process of me trying to find myself. What I did was make an appointment with my um, doctor. I'm going to see a psychiatrist and I'm going to see a therapist. No, I'm not ashamed that I have to see a psychiatrist because a psychiatrist doesn't mean that you're somebody who belongs in a mental health institution. I was having like an emotional breakdown. So anything that has to do with your emotions, your mind and stuff like that, you have to see a psychiatrist. A lot of people don't want to admit that. A lot of people don't want to admit that they need to see a psychiatrist. Not a lot of people want to even see a psychiatrist because they're ashamed or they're too prideful. But I'm going to tell you the way it is. I'm a homegirl from the streets. I've been through some shit. I've gone through shit emotionally and it's fucked me up. So instead of me just being fucked up and dealing with it and who knows what it will lead to, I am trying to take care of it the right way, legally. So I'm gonna see a psychiatrist and see if they can help me with some type of medication that's gonna bring my levels up to where I feel good. I'm taking Lexapro and Lexapro it helps my serotonin levels, but it's just probably not the right prescription for me. So my primary doctor prescribed that to me, but see, I have to see a psychiatrist in order for them to treat me properly because they specialize in that. So I'm gonna see a psychiatrist and I'm also gonna see a therapist who's gonna help me through my process. Um, a therapist I can sit here and talk to just like I'm talking to you guys. So I have an appointment with a therapist as well. So I don't like to just sit here in a funk. I don't want to go and get outside drugs and um, think that my problems are going to go away. I don't want to turn to alcohol. Um, so I'm finding other ways legally to take care of myself. Not only that, I went out and I bought me some books to help me. So I have a healing the soul, um, healing the soul of a woman. It's a devotional by Joyce Myers. This is a great book. I love it. It helps me. I read a chapter every single day. Um, but this is truly what I needed. Not only that, I got self-love workbook for women. 
this is helping me to love myself and not always um, say negative things towards my, towards myself because I do that a lot. And not only that, I had to get me a 11 piece coloring book. This really helps with my anxiety just to sit here and color these beautiful pages. It, it's just, I love it. It's really helped. So I do things to treat myself. I don't want to just sit there and, and keep affecting my family. So that's what I really been, I, I've been doing behind the scenes. I haven't really worked on any products. That's just how down I was, down and out. But here I am. I'm a survivor. I, I got this. I'm going to get it done. Not only that, but I think that me getting the sleeve done, I had the um, gastric sleeve surgery. I had that done last year in May. When I was done after surgery, they said that my medication probably wouldn't take to my body because, you know, there was a whole change. Gastric sleeve surgery, they remove 80% of your stomach. So it does some stuff to your body. Not only that, they remove some part in your in you that also takes away from like your hunger and stuff so I'm not only getting like good nutrition and a lack of vitamins minerals so that's messing with my body a lot nobody really says after works effects of that but that's one of them and so I'm doing what I can to treat that um I try to stay hydrated throughout the day gallon at least a gallon a day but that's very hard to do especially when you've had the surgery. And when I eat, I always try to do my protein first, just so I can have at least my protein in my body. And I think that's one thing people have failed to tell you about having the surgery is the after effect, the mental effect. That all plays a factor in my mental health as well, um, as well as my physical health. I do feel good. I mean, I'm looking great, but mentally I'm shut out. My whole surgery didn't hurt, nothing hurt. I can tolerate pain. Everything was good there. I don't regret having the surgery. I just regret not knowing more information. Um, I can always see a nutritionist, but sometimes just, I want them to be able to tell me about real foods, like real foods that I go and buy. I can't buy a whole separate meal, separate from what I feed my kids. My kids don't like vegetables. They don't sit there and will eat. The vegetables that I eat I'm not gonna sit there and waste food I have tried that and wasted so much food so I don't want to go that route I want to be able to talk to a nutritionist and then tell me like okay well you buy this and that way well, you can make this you can make that that's nutrition you know but they always want to break out with all this other stuff and stuff I never ever heard of and this diet and that diet and no I don't want to do none of that it's hard mentally but I'm doing it and I just have to keep pressing forward I mean that's all we have to do the moment you feel some type of way you have to identify it and find a way to fix it drugs out there is not the way to go especially you know people are taking Percocets that um, you know have fentanyl in it so you have to really be careful um, that's why I choose to go the legal way and get the real help that I need. A psychiatrist is going to give me the right medication that I need just to balance out my body. It's not something that's going to make me feel drowsy all day or make me feel like I'm all loaded. It's nothing like that. If you abuse medication, then yes, you're going to be that way. But if you take it like you should, there's no way that you're going to be feeling drowsy, loaded, and stuff like that. Today I woke up great. I feel fine. I am finally feeling like rejuvenated. I did a lot of meditation. And I'm not even going to lie, meditation has a big part in your mental health. Just to take five minutes a day and just, and you just exhale the bullshit. It's great. I love it. I do it often. I actually have taken time out to actually just do nothing. I don't care if anybody comes over or my husband thinks I'm a lazy ass. I am going to get my self care. I am going to nutrient my body. I am done, you know, feeling this way. So I can't care about what other people think about me right now. And if I'm going to sit on the couch for an hour, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. If I'm going to take a nap, that's exactly what I'm going to do. If you don't like it, then you can go somewhere else about your business. Because I am taking care of myself. This is me. This is my health. And then I'm doing this for my, for my kids. You know, it's very important that I'm here as long as I can possibly be. 
because I need to protect them from this world. Like what the hell is going on in this world? It's freaking dangerous. It's ugly. It's scary. And I will protect them as long as I live. And I want to live a long life. You know, I want to be able to see my grandkids. That kind of don't even sound right right now, but yeah, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to think that far ahead, but you know, I want to see my kids grow up. I want to see what they become. I want to see how they are, how they act. And I definitely do not want to throw this onto them. I want them to be able to have a good mental health, a good vision for themselves and be good mentally. I don't want them to have to deal with this. So this is part of a generational curse that I need to break because people back then before me just went with it, dealt with it. A lot of people now are having these mental breakdowns or having these midlife crises because it's something they've never faced. They didn't sit there and take time to evaluate and check their mind. You know, they just went through it. But now they're mentally screwed up or a lot of them have chosen to go a different way in life. You know, some of us are losing out on having parents in our life because they didn't know how to deal with stuff they were going through. So I don't want to go through that. I don't want to put my kids through that. So this is what I'm doing to deal with my mental health. I love to talk about it share my journey with everybody because i feel like it's important it's important to know that you are not alone no matter the type of person you are you know i was raised up to be you know big and bad and tough after my dad passed away that's really when my ptsd happened i'm not the big and bad only when i have to be i'm here to share my journey and bring it out there that hey homegirls have mental breakdowns and it's okay so you don't have to be this big and bad. You can break down and have a mental problem. You know, it is what it is. And I share my journey on my blogs a lot. I've always been good with writing instead of talking in front of a camera. So you can also see part of my journey through my blogs, which is uh, my blog website is touchedbyanangel.net. It'll be all in the description what my websites are. Um, I've also um, started the Night Owl show, so that's also an outlet for me where I'm going to, um, I put out a podcast about my journey as well. I wanted to do a whole lot more with my podcast, but I have to do one thing at a time because if not, I'm going to feel overwhelmed and I'm just going to lose my mind again. This is my legacy. This is something that's going to be here on this internet forever. So... This is going to be something for the next generation to see. This is something that, you know, is never going to go away. I tell I told my kids the other day, like, how awesome is this? Like, when I'm gone, like, you guys are going to have this and be like, hey, this is my mom. But you guys are also going to be able to see my story and my journey and the, the stuff that I went through to help you guys, the stuff that I went through just to change the way you guys live, you know, because that's what I'm doing it for. I'm not doing it for myself. This house that I have is not for me. It's for my kids. You know, it's, I, I wouldn't be living here if it was up to me. And if I was going through this and I had no kids, like I would probably be out there in the streets. I wouldn't probably be worrying about breaking this curse, you know? So it's all about being real with myself, being honest with you guys on who I am and i really hope that you guys can connect with me i would love to hear your guys' stories i would love for you to email me and let me know your thoughts or your stories or if you would like to share i would um i can always connect with you guys we can always do a uh, um, an interview. I can put you on my, to my platform. I would love to also put you on my podcast. I mean, if you have a great story, I know there's a lot of people out there dealing with so much stuff and a lot of people have a lot to share. I'm not the only one going through things. I mean, I know a lot of people have gone through worse physically. I was never physically abused as a child, but I know there's people that have been physically abused and have been affected by it. I would love to hear your story, you know, and share it with other people. It's good to put it out there because um, a lot of people feel alone. A lot of young youngsters, they feel like they're going through it alone. And I want them to know that you can go and seek help and not be ashamed. You don't have to sit here and tell the world what you're doing. I am telling the world what I'm doing so that way you know that you can go and do that. 
you know don't be prideful it's about your mental health don't be ashamed you don't have to tell anybody um, but just identify it if you feel like you're not right then you're not right you need to go and talk to your doctor about it i should have been a therapist i really wish i um, have went to school to be some kind of psychologist therapist even though i'm going through this on my own you can still go out and help people i was actually watching something i love to watch um crime and investigation so i was watching something about this man he uh his wife wanted to pay a hitman to have him killed. And he was a psychologist. He, he went through some trauma with his wife. And just to let you know that psychologists, just because they're psychologists doesn't mean that they're not going through anything. He was still going to be with his wife, even though he knew that she was not all there in her mind. And she had some psychological issues but he was still in love with her. Just because you're a psychologist doesn't mean that you can't go through things that require psychological attention, okay? So I, I mean, just like I've seen drug counselors, they're ex-drug addicts, you know? It's just because we can relate to that and understand. Like if I had my therapist, she's great. I just don't know if she could connect with me on um, or understand me completely without having gone through it. That's one thing that's great about having a therapist is that you can find somebody you connect with that really understands. And I think that I would have been a great therapist because I truly understand a lot of things. I've been through a lot of things, but I'm here to um, let you guys all know that I appreciate you all for checking into my channel. I appreciate you guys coming with me onto my journey. You can check me out on The Night Owl Show, which is my podcast. It's on Google Podcasts. It's on Apple Podcasts. Um, catch me on Instagram. I have my homegirls creation website. I will be updating my YouTube. I hope to put some more information out there, some more things that I've got going on. Again, this is me. This is my journey. I am Night Owl and I hope to catch you on the next show.